Hey, what's up everyone? So today we are going to work on the big D, the Dirty Max, as some of you would say. Um, today what we're going to do is pretty simple for the most part. As you can see, the ding is telling me that it's time to change my oil. So that is what we'll be working on. We should probably get the keys out of the truck just in case it decides to lock and we lock ourselves in there. It would be bad. So they're right there. I'm going to lose those eventually. But so what we're going to do today, obviously, like I said, we're going to change the oil, put some AMS oil 1540 in there. Yeah, 1540 it takes 10 quarts. Um, as you can see, I have about 12 quarts here because what I am going to do is put a kit on. This is the kit that I'm going to put on. It's made by AMS oil. It's an oil bypass filter. What this filter is for is actually um, on a diesel truck, it's, they, they have the EGR, all cars have EGRs on them. Um, but you've probably seen those diesels driving around where they blow a bunch of black smoke. I'll put some videos up and stuff so you guys can see it. Um, on newer diesels, obviously, since that DGR is there, they have all the diesel particulate filters and all your cattle, cat converters and stuff like that. But a lot of that soot goes back into the oil and it makes it very dirty. As you see, when we go to change it, it'll be extremely black because I'm about 7,000 miles on this oil change. But what this filter system does is has a relocation kit. You can see that it mounts on kind of like you normally would for a relocation kit but then the plate that it relocates to is actually this and you can see that it's got two places for oil filters one of them's for high flow and one of them's for low fill the low flow filter uses a two micron filter so it gets out a lot of the stuff you can see two microns 98.7 that's a good beta ratio um, and then just a normal 20 micron filter it comes with and actually a parker hose so it says that it's an air hose on it, air brake, but if you go onto Parker's website and look up this 2093, it's rated for petroleum products and a couple other things. So pretty much any type of oil that you're going to put through it, even synthetic, will be okay with this hose. It's a dash 10 hose, so the kit comes with that. Comes with all the fittings. These are all Parker fittings and everything, has a Loctite, so that's really great. Um, you can see on this, just the, the machining quality and the cast quality, it's, it's smooth. Um, obviously a nice, looks like an epoxy type coating on it is on there. The only one downside that I have with this kit, and it's on the adapter plate, everything machining wise is okay, but whenever you're cutting metal, right, you have to remember that it's going to leave some sharp burrs. If you ever cut up some metal that, or picked up some metal and cut yourself on it, you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, you might not be able to see it. We'll see if the camera will focus on it. But you can see in there that there's a couple burrs and um, having burrs inside your oil, especially metal burrs, eventually they'll get filtered out, but you never know if it's gonna go and get seeded in the babbit and the bearings or anything like that. And um, even a small amount of metal in the engine is no good. So we'll, we'll make sure to clean that little bit up right there, um, get rid of it. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna change the oil, put this on and go to town. Let's go. Okay, so uh, we're gonna use this. The two posts left. My truck is not too heavy for it, found out. And as you can see, it's a lifting capacity of 10,000 pounds. So we're gonna put her on there, or him, whatever it is. Okay, everybody, we got ourselves a big surprise here. Mr. What was your name again? Carl. Carl. Carl, Mr. Carl's here today. Um, he's going to help us install this. Maybe, I don't know. We're just going to look at his muscles here. Some big, big arms and stuff. <laughs> but um, yeah, how do you feel about this? Um, I like it. All right, so we got it under there. Um, I had to raise it up a bit, as you can see. But we need a 14 or a 13 millimeter, it looks like, to drain the oil. So let's go get ourselves one of those. It's over here somewhere. It's in the metric. It's a 12 to 14. Let's take one of those. What is this? It's, you know, it's a, it's 
size there. What did you say? Look at that. 13. All right, so we got them. Let's figure it out. Grab our little handy dandy tool here. And uh, on a wheelchair. And go ahead and roll over there underneath the truck. Look at the size of that dry shaft. These things aren't like Mustangs, you know. I don't know what's supposed to be. Alright, let's get in there. Let it flow a little bit. You gotta let it wash all the well. Oh. Okay. And, uh, get in there and get a little streaming. There you go, we got our oil sample. So, where's that rag? It's like your, your uh, truck is taking a drug test. That's all the soot I was telling you about. That's why we're gonna put the uh, filtration vice up the, the passer the passer buyer. This is why you don't let your truck do drugs. This is uh, severe dehydration. Very dehydrated. So we'll clean that up. I should have shared some of my water with your truck. Yeah, put it in the oil. Always make sure to put water inside the oil. Sorry about this rag, Jared. I'll get you a new one. What yeah. are they going to tell you when they analyze uh, the oil? Uh, but yeah, so they'll tell you that some of the things that are dissolved in it, like if there's any Babbitt, if there's any types of irons or aluminums or anything, just to get a general idea of the health of your engine. Hmm. And then they'll also tell you some of the stuff. They'll tell you like the acidity of the oil. <laughs> Sometimes that can tell you stuff like the oxidization that's occurring within the oil. Usually on vehicles, it's not as big as a problem. That might be more of a problem on heavy machinery where they're running for longer times. Um, so this is good. Sometimes you can use this to understand how well your engine is running, make sure that it's not breaking down on you or anything. Obviously they all do, but that's the point of maintenance is to prevent that as long as you can. Yeah, so the filter is right up in there, as you can see. Um, so we gotta pull that off. Sean. It's like you got yourself a bracket. We you made see one. It fits. But we drop still got to drill the holes drop to. Uh, the I think we can't do that. It's don't copyrighted. Drop it. Okay. Copyrighted <laughs> infringement. You're gonna get no. in trouble. That was a parody. Oh, it was a parody. There are parody laws. You can actually do that if it's a parody. I'm a parrot. Right. So what we're gonna do? You can see. Don't, is the don't drop it like it's hot. Actually. <laughs> right there. How do we? How's our clearance look right there? That looks pretty uh, good, huh? Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, so it's all welded up in there. Not the prettiest of jobs, but not going anywhere quite pretty warm next thing we'll do we'll get that mounted in once that cools down we'll spray a little bit of paint on it to keep everything from rusting and then we'll start making our lines and then fill it with oil so this stuff's not too hard to assemble you can see that we got these fittings here it's got a little bit of a taper so it feeds in screws in and then this is the the hose end the uh, socket I believe they call it you can see it's got some threading in there so it threads onto the hose pretty easily um, it's a reverse thread left hand thread so to tighten it onto the hose you actually spin it backwards you gotta get it kind of started straight got some oil Just put a little bit of oil on it and it's good to go this one's a normal thread so you just kind of get it started sometimes it helps to push on it with the palm of your hand just to get it started and once you do that you can get your wrench and go all the way and all you do once you have your wrench in 
or once you're wrenching it, you bottom this to the socket and you're done. Parker makes some good stuff. Um, aside from having to build the bracket and everything and it not really fitting up, I mean, honestly, there's unfortunately not really anywhere to mount it. That's super easy in the truck. Um, so building the bracket, but aside from that, everything on this kit is pretty good quality. I certainly think it is. Um, Parker is a pretty good product, if you ask me. We do use it at my job, and um, not, not really many issues with it, as long as you know the correct product to use and specify the correct product, um, you shouldn't really have any issues. So we'll get this made up and installed. Okay, all right, so it's all in there. Put our mileage and our date on them so we know when to change them next. As you can see, that's all in there. Um, a little bit of a leak behind it, but I haven't put any oil in it, so that might just be from the stuff I had put on it originally. So the next thing to do, got our drain pan on, put our skid plate back on. I never actually needed to remove that. Um, so we'll go ahead and lower the truck down and top off the oil, check the level, and we should be done. So it's about uh, midnight now, started this around six. Truck is running, oil is topped off. We'll check it again after I drive it a little bit and um, runs through and everything and idles for a little while. Everything is on there, you can't really see too much. Sorry, it's kind of dark, but filter is up in there, check for leaks. There was a small one on the filter housing adapter. So tighten that up and it seems to be good. Um, like I said, we'll do the oil analysis in the future. We'll look at that, kind of see what the results come back. And then when we go to do the next oil change, we'll do another oil analysis to see just how well this worked. Is it worth it? Is it worth the $400 for an oil bypass system? Let's find out. Hopefully it gives my engine a little bit more life, um, but only time will tell. Thanks for watching.